Sofia. Thank you. I'll give it back to you. Good evening, everyone. Happy to see you here tonight. Would you please join me in, uh, in Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and remain standing, please. In lieu of an invocation tonight, I would like to ask you to join me in a moment of silence um, for Officer Joe Burson of City of Holly Springs Police Department, who was killed in the line of duty last night. Thank you. Our hearts go out to Officer Burson's wife and his family and to our friends in the city of Holly Springs. I have to call our June 17th meeting to order. At this time, I'll have a consideration to uh, approve the agenda. I do need to add the topic of real estate to the executive session. In addition to litigation, any other changes or additions to the agenda? Mayor, I'd like to add something under council introduced items. I'd like to discuss convenience stores, please. Okay. Any other changes? So a motion. <clears throat> motion to approve as amended. Second. So a motion, a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed? All mayors voted for the motion. This time, guests and visitors, we have a presentation on our energy sustainability audit from Schneider Electric. Welcome. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you guys tonight. Um, I know I've met Ms. McGrew before, but um, to all of you, I'm Jen Miller with Schneider Electric. Um, so, kind of over the last few months, we've been having discussions with um, Mr. Peppers, Nathan, and the rest of you all staff, really around this idea of capital stewardship and sustainability program. Um, and we just felt like it was the right time, kind of ending the, at the end of our audit, to come and give you all a full update on what we uncovered in terms of opportunity and kind of where we go from here. So. Kind of first off, I do know as growing up in the city of North Atlanta, I am well aware that Canton has grown exponentially over the past few years. And y'all have really taken a proactive approach as a council to stay ahead of that growth. And not only you know continue to improve the infrastructure, but also remain an innovative city. So in discussions with the city administration, it became really clear that this was a good time for this program and this partnership. Um, really, not only because of where y'all are at today, but where y'all are looking to go. So today, I just wanted to give y'all an overview of how this program really works, and then talk about kind of what we found in this audit. Because <coughs> in the city of, or in Georgia, we've really been mostly focused on helping local governments in order to um, find ways to fund and address infrastructure needs um, while still advancing sustainability goals. So kind of starting off, what is a capital stewardship and reinvestment program? I know that is a mouthful, um, but there's really three main steps that we take during this program. The first is leveraging technologies that drive revenue for the city. And then we reinvest that revenue back into capital improvements. And we implement all of it in a comprehensive 
type of turnkey solution. So breaking that down a little bit, in terms of leveraging technologies, that could be anything from a IT system upgrade optimization to LED lighting retrofits, anything that is gonna lower y'all's energy and operational spending. Um, we then take that savings and reinvest that into ca more capital intensive needs. So for example, y'all's HVAC system at the police station, knowing that that is at the end of its useful life, but that is a capital intensive need using that revenue stream. And all of this is delivered really in a turnkey solution that Schneider Electric handles everything from initial engineering and design to um, the construction management and implementation and then the post project support on the back end. So this is a very high level overview of kind of a complicated process, but I wanted to see if there were any questions on that concept. So this next slide really just kind of demonstrates what I just said in a um, you know, graphic manner. It really shows the approach we try to take in a project, balancing those revenue generating technologies to offset those needs and really create the comprehensive solution. So that gives the overview of kind of how this program works, but looking at more specifically the city of Canton and the opportunities that we identified. Um, overall, the objective is to develop a solution that modernized facilities while furthering those sustainability goals that y'all have set as a, one of your main tenets as a city council. Um, so there's some of the goals outlined here, but if you look on the right, that graphic identifies really the six key areas that we typically see as opportunities and um, areas that we are aiming to enable for our clients. So we're gonna highlight a few of these and talk about the opportunities we saw, but I think some of y'all, most of y'all should have received the full business case audit and um, the report. That has lots of detail and feel free to ask any questions along the way. But the first area we wanted to highlight is efficiency. Um, this is really the building block of projects that of pretty much every project we approach. Um, that is all around driving um, that revenue stream. But y'all are really lucky to have Scott Buckner. He has done a lot for your city um, with basically a one-man maintenance staff. He has um, really gotten the city a lot further than a lot of other cities that we come into. But there's only so much that you know one man can do in eight hours a day. So some of the other opportunities that we saw are expanding on what he's already done and also implementing new, new ideas, but really just everything that can drive that operational cost down. Um, during the site audit, that's when we really went in Yelp's buildings and identified some of this, but then we also took a look at your utility spending and our energy engineers ran models to see what impact these technologies might have. And we estimate that the city could drive about a 45% reduction in energy expenditures by implementing technologies that we are talking about. Um, this amounts to over $310,000 a year in savings. So we're excited about this opportunity. We feel like this is a, a big opportunity, not, not just to further the sustainability initiatives, but also to create a financial solution to addressing some of the needs of the city. So then moving on to the facilities and infrastructure side, um, we know that y'all have been growing and with, with that has come acquiring some new buildings or new to you buildings that maybe have some older infrastructure within them. Um, specifically, I know I mentioned that police station that HVAC system, you've really gotten your money's worth out of it and it's going to need replacings. So looking at things like that and the building controls that go along with that, but then taking that even further, I know a big theme that I've heard Mr. Peppers and Nathan say is the connectivity of y'all's park systems and preparing for that growth, really giving your citizens the ability to make the most of those systems 
With that, there's some remote trails that rise some concerns around the safety of, of these trails for, for citizens. So looking at opportunities to expand trail lighting is something that we've also talked about and we have experience with other cities and definitely see that as an opportunity. And then the last piece is investing, continuing that investment in the solar and EV infrastructure. We know that y'all have already started a very impressive project with the um, parking deck here at City Hall. And that is going to really kind of set the ball rolling, but there are additional opportunities to continue that. We specifically saw, um, moving on to this next slide, kind of a target area would be the police station. And I think there were already some discussions among administration about this being a potential target for an additional solar opportunity, but it being a 24 seven facility, it's kind of a natural big energy user that you would want to provide some additional power to. So creating covered parking for the police while implementing solar initiative is an opportunity that we would invest dur investigate during our investment grade audit phase. But these other pieces just really kind of show the you know, EV infrastructure, some of our proposed places to expand that. Um, but all of this, like I said, would be investigated more in depth during our design phase to really help the city figure out what the feasibility is of you know, how much does this cost and where does this make the most sense and where can we drive the most savings and the most revenue. We would work hand in hand with y'all to kind of determine the, how that would work. So then the third piece is sustainability. And knowing that y'all have already identified this as a priority is pretty exciting to us. Um, working in the Southeast, that's not always the case. Y'all are definitely ahead of the curve in establishing this as something that, that you care about as a council. And um, we've had discussions with Kelly and Nathan and this really all started around the idea of this ARC Green Community Certification. Um, the city has had a goal to achieve, start working towards that and said, Schneider, how can you, which of these areas can you help us check off? But that kind of developed into a larger discussion around, we actually have a full consulting branch of Schneider that consults with cities, corporations around sustainability plans setting measurable, actionable goals that y'all can move forward with in the future. So we know that y'all have a long list in your tenant of sustainability and you have an idea of all these things that y'all wanna do. We help kind of pair that together and see how does that make sense moving forward. Um, and on that same brand, um, branch, branding and public relations, there, with our projects, you can be doing so many good things and we know how important it is to communicate with citizens about normal day-to-day -day items, but when you're doing a big project, you wanna make sure citizens are aware of why you're doing it and also that y'all are getting a little credit for the strides that you're making as a city. So we actually have a full marketing team and house that helps all of our clients um, market these projects and really kind of create that message to the broader community. And these are just a few example mock-ups that Haley, our marketing director, put together. Any, any actual marketing material we put out, would, we would work hand in hand with y'all. These are just some examples of um, street pole lighting, if that were an aspect of the project, you know, ways to create that signage and message around town and then also communicate through different channels that y'all might use. Um, but so that it's not all on your team and we're kind of helping y'all through that. And this just gives the overview of this solution. We know y'all are spending around 670,000 in utilities. Driving that down 45%, we think we could drive a revenue stream of 8.4 million across the course of our partnership. So this really just summarizes all of those you know, key areas that we discussed. Um, the last piece I just wanted to touch on is Schneider Electric, who we are. Um, we have been in the energy business for over 100 years, but specifically this legislation in 
Georgia passed about 10 years ago that enabled um, these types of projects to be done in local government. And um, since then, we've done over $180 million in work. Um, we are consistently named number one in our industry as across all energy services company. And actually, most recently, we were just named the number one most sustainable company in the world. So we feel like we have a leg to stand on in helping, helping y'all out with these initiatives and um, are really excited about this opportunity. So in terms of next steps, we've kind of outlined here all of the steps that we've taken so far. Um, according to the legislation, this, does, this process does have to be publicly bid. Um, it's under our RFQ, so selected based on qualifications, but all of this leading up to it so far is kind of helping us determine, is this an opportunity that, that is feasible and helping kind of prove ourselves to you guys and y'all determine, hey, is this something that, that we are interested in and we want to move forward with? So um, I think Billy and Nathan wanted me to come talk to y'all, give y'all an overview. Um, this is definitely high level. Um, there's a lot of detail in the report and happy to answer any questions that y'all have. Thank you. I've been anticipating reports. We look forward to reviewing it in greater detail and looking at the next steps. Are there any questions? Great. Thank you. You have in your packet the city <coughs> council meeting drafts from June 30 um, for the minutes, June, uh, June 3rd minutes of uh, any corrections or additions to those minutes or a motion? Motion to approve. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All members voted to approve. Any other informational items or announcements? At this point, we have our 10 minute public input. We have one citizen signed up to uh, speak, Mr. James Cannon. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'm James Cannon. I reside at 124 Holly Trace Lane, Ball Ground, Georgia. Uh, I'm a native of Canton, Georgia. I'm a certified public accountant. My office has been in downtown Canton since 1993. And I own a 33-acre farm that's adjacent to the city um, of Canton on two sides. Um, the reason I'm speaking today or, uh, is because on the agenda, one of the items is uh, under new business. Uh, the first item is an old Doss Road project. And it's a, it's a residential project. And I th certainly think that a residential project there is, uh, is appropriate. Uh, I mentioned that I own a, uh, a farm in Canton, um, uh, next to Canton. And it is included uh, on a map in the uh, Canton 2040 comprehensive plan. There is a uh, uh, trail that runs through uh, my farm uh, in Appendix A in that in that document. Uh, Miss, the uh, uh, presentation on energy and sustainability mentioned uh, connectivity of parts through the trail system and lighting there. Um, on that um, on that appendix, the trail runs from the Etowah River Park to the Kenny Askew Park. So it would connect those two parks. And I would just hope that as y'all are considering the proposals for the Old Doss Road project, that accommodations for that trail that is included in the City of Canton comprehensive plan will be made. Um, I think it's important for the connectivity of trails and parts to continue. And uh, that, um, that trail would end up connecting um, 
the Kenny Askew part to the Etowah River part to the Heritage Road, I mean the Heritage Park to the Bowling Park and then back around to, to Brick Mill Falls making for a tremendous trail system for the city of Canton. Um, Cherokee County has started its process of updating its transportation plan and I hope that the city will uh, influence the county as it's doing its transportation plan to take into account the areas where the city and county overlap. Their plan, I believe, is uh, scheduled to be uh, published uh, next summer. They engaged a firm earlier this year that has begun that process. So I appreciate your time and I hope that uh, we can uh, continue to improve the trail system in uh, the city of Canton in Cherokee County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. We have two items on the consent agenda. As usual, I will read these two items. If anyone would like either or both removed for further discussion, we'll be happy to do so. Item A, approval of proposed fiscal year end 2020 budget amendments. And then item B, approval of proposed enterprise lease agreements. Anyone like Either of those items removed? If not, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. second. So motion to approve and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All members voted for the consent agenda. Moving into old business, we have item A, discussion and possible action on cases MPA 2104-002 and CUP 2104-001 for the mill on Etowah project. Mr. Patton. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members. Uh, there was a public hearing conducted by city council at last uh, council meeting in regards to these two applications. Uh, master plan amendment uh, 2104-002. The master plan amendment uh, was to increase the uh, number of uh, multifamily units from what was previously approved 250 to what they have uh, requested uh, 280. Conditional use permit uh, is a requirement of uh, the city uh, for all multiple family projects. Uh, staff notes there was no opposition voiced at the public hearing uh, held before city council. Staff does recommend approval of uh, the master plan amendment as well as approval of the conditional use permit with uh, a couple of conditions for council's consideration. First of those uh, would be uh, submitting a revised traffic study uh, prior to the issuance of a land disturbance permit. Uh, the second condition for council consideration uh, would be uh, stipulations in the letter dated June 8th from the residential group that addressed some things uh, that council had uh, asked uh, for additional information uh, for in regards to, uh, uh, if you will, public art, uh, some things relative to uh, sustainability, energy efficiency, uh, workforce housing, uh, the majority of this project uh, does meet uh, the HUD AMI uh, for uh, the city that the uh, council was in agreement with a few months back. I'm here to answer any questions. I did email and you do have a paper copy of rendering of uh, the facility. Uh, uh, one of the council members had asked for a rendering uh, reflecting what the parking deck would look like. Uh, it is a, a sketch drawing on page three. Uh, you will note that uh, from Railroad Street, uh, a major portion of uh, the parking structure will be uh, obscured by an existing uh, building that's part of uh, the mill on Etowa uh, and also only a portion of uh, the parking structure is going to be uh, visible from Railroad Street. Thank you, Mr. Batten. We'll open up for council discussion. Questions, comments? Ms. McGrew. 
Mr. Patton, is this the final rendering of the elevation of the apartments? Uh, that's the latest that uh, we have. They will have to go uh, uh, through a uh, design review process. This property is located within the historic district and uh, it will have to go to the Historic Preservation Commission uh, for uh, their uh, consideration uh, since uh, it's in the historic district and it is new construction. Are they open to ideas? on this elevation? I'm quite sure they will listen uh, to any uh, suggestions or thoughts. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Mr. Carlin. Mr. Patton, is the, from the, I think I asked at the last meeting about the sustainability green initiatives, that sort of thing? Would they be following up? I see in their letter they've noted some. Does that fall in line with the tenants and roadmap that the council's put out there? To an extent, yes, sir. They do not uh, adhere to any of uh, the certification levels. Uh, there are about a dozen different organizations that staff's aware of that's involved with sustainability issues. Uh, you know, the ARC uh, green program, they have uh, certification levels. Uh, International Code Congress uh, has uh, standards in place. Uh, housing and urban development has standards. They are going to uh, have uh, some sustainable uh, things in place, such as uh, LED lighting, uh, uh, low flow uh, toilet fixtures. They're going to have charging stations. But as far as reaching a certain level based upon one of these uh, organizations such as a bronze, gold, or, you know, just certified level, they're not uh, going that far. Does city staff believe that they've gone far enough to meet the tenants that we've laid out? Yes. Mr. Patton, you said um, when you were discussing conditions, you mentioned the revised traffic study um, and then the June 8th letter. Um, so would that be, if we did a condition on that, would it be to accept the um, uh, to, to accept all the things in that letter? I mean, Correct. Or, okay. That were outlined in that letter. Okay. Uh, that's uh, the reason for uh, uh, suggesting the condition of uh, the stipulations uh, from uh, the residential group uh, letter dated June 8th. That uh, would uh, be uh, the condition, and those items uh, would uh, have to be complied with. They have agreed and stipulated uh, to that. Okay. Uh, I do, uh, do appreciate uh their flexibility and their their offers to uh, to assist us in some of those items. So. Mr. Estes. Just a quick question on the uh, traffic study. So if it says, hey, there's a lot of traffic, what would be an outcome of that? Uh, if there are uh, recommendations uh, for improvements uh, at uh, uh, an intersection or a roadway, uh, the staff through uh, the land disturbance construction plans can require that those uh, recommended improvements uh, be done prior to issuing a land disturbance permit. Do you know an approximate cost for, for a traffic study? Is it kind of a, a ballpark or does it depend? It depends upon uh, how extensive uh, a study is done. Uh, could be 25,000, could be 30,000, uh, could be 70,000. Okay. Majority of them that I've seen lately are running in that $25,000, $30,000 range. Okay. I do think if we're <clears throat> looking at adding you know, 280 units here, I think an updated traffic study would be Oh, I agree. I just was wondering. Necessary. You know, is it? Mm -hmm get in that situation where they say, well, we need a, a traffic light, and then they go, well, it's not our road, so. Right, right. Okay. 
Are, do you have any plans for, I mean, are there any plans in place for reformation uh, Boulevard, I think, or Parkway now it's called for the road going in to the development now? I mean, are you talking about the intersection of Reformation Parkway and Waleska, or are you talking about improvements? Uh, the actual road to, uh, into, the, into the development. That is a private road, uh, and uh, there have uh, been no discussions about uh, improvements. Uh, uh, if uh, it starts to fail or that sort of thing, uh, you'll see tenants uh, complaining to the owners and uh, they probably have a property owners association down there that uh, handle and take care of upgrades uh, to the roadway. Okay. Ms. Schmidt. So just to clarify, there's no, the staff doesn't know if the mill on Etowah itself plans to, not just if the road fails, but make that road actually look nice. <laughs> 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 maybe some curves, maybe some landscaping all the way in. Uh, they can probably do some landscaping. They've not indicated anything to staff uh, uh, of that nature. The majority of that site is in floodplain, mm -hmm. so doing curbing and gutter and uh, stormwater presents a little bit of an issue, if you will, uh, most of that area uh, uh, because uh, in floodplain uh, and stormwater uh, is sort of designed, if you will, for sheet flow. Uh, towards uh, the river and that sort of thing. Ms. Carla. Mr. Padman, uh, I may not be reading these plans right. <laughs> Would the only way currently into and out of the apartment complex that they've proposed here would be on Reformation Parkway, that turn there next to the auto zone, or go through the mill and come back out on Railroad Street? That is correct. There. They're not planning any other entry or exit? Nothing has uh, been indicated by uh, the owner of uh, the mill on uh, or uh, the residential group. Okay. Thank you, sir. Addresses? I would like to make a motion to approve uh, the master plan. Do we need to do them separate? Yes, sir. Okay. I was going to mention need to do a separate motion uh, for a master plan amendment and then CUP. Okay, so make a motion to approve the, the master plan amendment to uh, increase the number of units from 250 to 280. Yeah. On this? I would put it on both of them. Okay, okay. and then I'll, and then. okay, I was thinking we'd go on the CUP. So then I would add the conditions um, of the traffic study to be conducted before uh, the land disturbance permit is, um, is provided. And the um, the accepted conditions um, outlined on the June eighth letter from the residential group. We would certainly uh, include that language. Yeah, then, then yeah. The, and so we would do the the traffic study and then implement any recommendations per staffs. I have a motion. Is there a second? Based on Mr. Alexander's letter, uh, it addresses the uh, anonymous donations for the art, art support of art, for the green building features and the support for housing, and the police officers' units. Three units. I second the motion. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Comments? I think I'll just, Ms. Carl. I think I'll just note like what we're talking about here is adding 30 units to something that's already approved. Um, I think if this had showed up as a brand new project, I'd have a lot less concern about it. Um, given what they're, where they are with these notes, with their numbers, with their, this, this increase in density, my hope is that by increasing these the number of apartments we have here, that'll help us achieve the goal of adding stock to Canton and lowering the average prices for apartments around town. 
just over my head. Thank you. And I would add, I'm just excited for any heads and beds downtown. So <laughs> please, yeah. someone come. I was going to say, <laughs> I think it, all it, of our it residents fits have what asked City for that. Council wants with uh, additional residential opportunities uh, in the downtown area. Yep. Yeah. Two major goals additional heads and beds downtown and more retail and mill on it while yeah, providing absolutely. both, of course. So. Further discussion? A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All members voted for the motion. Follow up with a motion to, uh, to approve the conditional use permit. Again, with the, um, the condition of the traffic study and um, an implementation of the recommendations at, at staff's guidance and um, meeting the, the um, conditions that were uh, presented and approved in the June 8th letter by the residential group. The motion? Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All members voted for the motion. Thank you. Move on to item B, discussion and possible action on case MPA 2104-004, located at 70 Laurel Canyon Village Circle. Mr. Patton. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, council members. A public hearing was held on this by city council. This is a city-initiated master plan amendment. This involves uh, the 1.9 acre city-owned uh, piece of property uh, that is a uh, designated uh, within a uh, commercial uh, tract at Laurel Canyon. This master plan amendment would allow that property to be developed uh, for residential purposes. Uh, the staff does recommend approval. Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All members voted for the motion. Item C. Discussion and possible action on case MP2104-003 for Laurel Canyon Pod 3. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Public hearing was uh, held uh, in regards to this uh, at the last City Council meeting. This uh, master plan amendment would allow pod three uh, to be uh, developed uh, to include attached residential units. The current uh, master plan approval specifies detached residential units. Uh, they're talking about six total units on this pod. Uh, there was no opposition uh, noted uh, at the, the public hearing meeting. Staff does recommend approval with a condition that all construction uh, materials uh, be delivered on site, all construction uh, workers' vehicles uh, be parked on site, uh, no closure, if you will, of uh, Laurel Canyon Boulevard associated with the construction of these units. Thank you, Mr. Patton. Any discussion or questions? Ms. McGrew. Mr. Patton, uh, there will be three structures on this property. What is the acreage involved, please? It's uh, about four or five acres, best of my recollection. And will this be like an eyebrow or will each structure have their own driveway off of the parkway? There's gonna be one uh, common shared driveway for all three units, uh, part of this uh, proposed project. Okay. Be one curb cut. One curb cut. Uh, what about their their trash pickup? Will it be on that cur on that? I'm going to call it an eyebrow, because that's what um, I have in there. How will I that occur? I have a tendency to think that uh, they will probably uh, uh, have to uh, have trash collection uh, somewhere along Liberty uh, Boulevard. We are going to uh, not Liberty, but uh, Laurel Canyon Parkway. <laughs> All righty. Thinking um, of uh, something else that I talked with an attorney about <laughs> right. right before five o'clock. So there won't be a cul-de-sac at the end. There won't be the 18-foot no. circle. They will have to uh, accommodate uh, 
uh, fire suppression uh, requirements mm -hmm. in regards to distance for, for fire trucks. We had spoken with them uh, previously in regards to this common shared driveway uh, uh, meeting uh, city standards. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have standards in place that addresses uh, the width of the paving, things of that nature. So if a fire truck can get in there, I'm sure a dump truck, uh, trash truck could get in there too? They should be able to, yes ma'am. Okay, thank you. And I believe this pod was previously approved for 10? 10, 10 units. So it's actually a reduction in four units, correct? Correct. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. Yes, with those conditions um, that the construction uh, materials be delivered on site, the construction vehicles be on site, and with no blocking of Law Canyon Parkway at all. Was that all the conditions, Mr. Patton? Yes, ma'am. Okay, with those conditions, please. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for discussion. Mr. Esses, yeah, I Jeff. just had a quick question. Um, I know we talked about it at the last meeting that this would be a private road, but if history repeats itself, what will happen is, is all the residents, those six residents, will come back and go, but everything else is being serviced, and then homeowners association fails or whatnot, right? It kind of it falls into this, we're going to pick it up at some point in the future. and. So, so what I would suggest is what we've done on another road in that particular neighborhood is right at the entrance to that road. We have a sign that's posted that says end of public maintenance, and it, it makes it pretty clear it will never be a public street. I don't remember it being a private road. It, it's the drive that goes in. It, it's a driveway. It's a driveway. It's, it's really not a, not a road, uh, if you will. It's a, a common shared driveway. Okay. Uh, there is, still is uh, uh, a process in which uh, the property owners could petition for that to become a uh, city maintenance street. If it does not meet uh, city street standards, it could not be considered uh, uh, for uh, acceptance as a city maintained street. Which would require them to put aside a drive sign and stuff like that. Yeah, I just I mean we we do that and then. Six years from now, that they have to do the first paving. You know, they're going to go six people, and you know, I'm just trying to get ahead of the. We've seen it played out. Norton Lake was one of those. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, otherwise, I have no no other questions or concerns. I have another question. How will that be assigned addresses? Will that drive have a name? Most likely, uh, Cherokee County addressing will require them to uh, uh, place a name uh, on that common shared driveway to assign addresses, or they will assign addresses uh, based off of uh, Laurel Canyon Parkway. Mm -hmm. There are two options uh, for uh, Cherokee County addressing to consider. Other questions, comments? We have a motion and a second. All members in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All members voted for the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members. Thank you, Mr. Patton. We went along to item D, discussion and possible action on request by the mill on Etowah to expand the enterprise zone agreement for fees paid through 2021. Mr. Peppers. Uh, we did submit a memo back to you that basically outlined that uh, in 20. 21 to date, we've had about $5,400 worth of um, permit fees uh, provided um, by the uh, project at the mill. We don't really know what we could estimate for the rest of the year, but my guess is it's going to be somewhere in that five to $10,000 range. So if you were in agreement, what we would do is we would refund what's been paid to date, and then we would make a note in our to basically... Uh, have a zero cost for those fees for the remainder of the year. Um, I believe when it was initially anticipated in the agreement that, you know, that was put in place not thinking about the pandemic and things like that. And so the goal was to have construction completed in 2020. It didn't happen, so they're doing work in 2021. So staff doesn't have a problem recommending that that expansion go through 2021. Um, we would not recommend the um, the repayment of 
business license fees and things like that because those would not go to the mill as the developer they would go to the individual businesses uh, and and ultimately every other business in the city pays those fees so if we did <coughs> agree to do that, if council agreed to do this would we need to specify what fees would be covered it would only be for for building permit and inspection fees okay questions comments specify that or is it just implied in the agreement right okay. i'll make a motion to amend the existing enterprise zone agreement with the mill on etowah to expand certain development fee waivers through the end of the calendar year to Eligible fees collected to date on the project. Second. Very thorough motion. No problem. Motion and second. <laughs> Excellent motion. <so. laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All members voted for the motion. Item E discussion of ethics ordinance. Mr. Dyer. At the last meeting, uh, I brought you a draft of the ethics ordinance. I didn't receive any comments from anyone. In the, in the interceding two, two weeks. So um, we can put it on the agenda for next month for adoption. I do have some changes that I, I will be making. One is a, a typo, so I won't even mention that one. But I, I thought we should strike the ownership of $5,000 or more of equity in a company because the 5% ownership is probably going to capture most situations there. And then we also have, if you've made money, $5,000 or more, which is going to be more common and trying to know whether somebody owns $5,000 worth of equity in a company would be impossible. I don't even know. So I'm going to propose striking that. Uh, there's a pro provision that pro provides about uh, a council member entering into a contract with a council member if it's subject to public bidding and calls for the city manager to provide a waiver. I was going to add and the city attorney to that. So the city manager and the city attorney would have to tell you about that waiver. Um, and then also about the drawing of names for the ethics board, uh, changing that to city clerk instead of mayor and council drawing, actually drawing the names. Okay. Any further discussion? And of course, That's we will have chances to make other changes as we consider adoption next month. But Correct. Okay. Appreciate your work on that. Look forward to adopting it. So, Thank you, Mr. Dyer. Any forward to new business? Item A, discussion of cases AX2102-004, Z2102-004, and MP2102-006 for the old Doss Road project. Mr. Patton, you're back. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Uh, uh, this is a uh, staff technical report uh, in compliance with our new uh, public hearing development process, if you will. Uh, this involves uh, an annexation, a zoning, and a master plan for 75.817 acres of land uh, located on uh, Old Doss Road. Uh, the project is uh, requesting a plan development residential. It does uh, include 14 attached units out of the total 150 uh, units uh, on uh, the site. Uh, the property is vacant, undeveloped, uh, if you will. Uh, it does uh, have a mixture of hardwoods uh, and uh, evergreen pine trees for the most part. There is an existing improved roadway through the middle of the subject property. Uh, that uh, the county made uh, improvements to uh, a number of years ago and uh, was reflected as a uh, county uh, maintained roadway. Uh, zoning to the north is a uh, SU special use across the railroad tracks. Uh, that property is owned by the city of Canton. It was zoned special use in 2018. Property uh, to the south is a combination of uh, city and county property that is zoned R40, residential uses. To the east, uh, there is property uh, that is uh, zoned uh, R20, which is a city of Canton, 
uh, some existing uh, residential uh, development uh, to the, and that's uh, backwards. Uh, the west is uh, the R20 uh, City of Canton property, and to the east is uh, property zoned agriculture in unincorporated Cherokee County. Uh, that agricultural property does uh, contain some residential uh, developments, uh, or not developments, but residential structures on uh, multi-acreage uh, parcels of land. The uh, proposed project, uh, as I said, is a total of 150 units. 14 of the units will be attached units. Uh, there's a pod A on the site plan is 70 foot, five foot wide lots. The uh, pod B uh, detached residential lots will be 55 feet wide. Pod C lots will be uh, uh, 60 feet wide. It provides for a variety of uh, uh, housing uh, options, if you will, uh, with uh, the different uh, widths of the lots and that sort of thing. Uh, there are uh, some uh, streams located on the property. There is flood plain. Uh, all of that is addressed. Approximately 46% uh, of the site uh, is uh, proposed to be a common green space area. All of uh, the stream, stream buffer areas, flood plain areas are contained uh, within uh, the common open space as a part of this project. Uh, that is a, a quick uh, technical report, if you will. Uh, there are still some uh, issues ultimately to be uh, resolved, worked out relative to sanitary sewer. Uh, prior to the public hearing at the next city council meeting in July, uh, that package will include uh, the uh, community input uh, report. That meeting uh, was held earlier this week at uh, the Canton Theater. Uh, there were 15 to 20 people in attendance uh, at the meeting. Uh, the applicant has met with the Board of Education. Uh, they ha do have an agreement with the Board of Education in regards to a contribution for mitigation uh, of uh, this new development uh, that also will be contained within the package you received prior to the public hearing. Okay. Thank you. So remind me of this new process. Do we discuss this or we're we just getting a technical report from you? So that's what I thought. So just making sure I want to be <laughs> sure that so you, you this is the first technical, technical report, so I want to make sure right. we're doing it correctly. So you got your technical report tonight. Thank you. Recall that between the technical report and the public hearing that as a council individually or groups can meet with the developer, you should have a staff person in the meeting with you that takes notes. All of those notes will be part of the case file. Thank you. So the, the developer may reach out to you to see if you would like to meet with them in the next two weeks. Just wanted to, to make that clear since it is a new process and I know the last meeting we were still on the old process and this one's a new one so keep myself <laughs> from being confused most, most importantly so, mr. Carlin and mr. mayor I was I was confused as well and I know we had some citizens that appeared today worried that they may have missed the public hearing and so I just want to make sure we reiterate that Correct. next um, next council meeting first council meeting in July that will be, be the public, the public hearing public, and that's Correct. where people can speak for and against Correct. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Uh, at any time, uh, anyone uh, can uh, submit uh, in writing by email or a letter uh, to our office any support or opposition that they have uh, in regards to this proposed project. Uh, we always accept uh, emails or written form, make that part of the package that we present to City Council. At any time uh, a citizen becomes aware of a, a public hearing application uh, throughout the process. Thank you, CS. We are offering, you know, uh, much more advanced notice, and, and so any citizen is welcome to speak during public input on any project up and through the public hearing, too. So if anyone had elected to come and speak tonight during public input session, or attempt public input, they, they could. So hopefully we'll all get used to this new uh, 
system, which is, is a, a much better system, but we'll, we'll get there. So, but thank you for your reminders, Mr. Patton. And we'll move forward on the technical report for discussion of cases AX2104-008, Z2104-010, and TXT2104-009 for the Knox Bridge Highway Project. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Uh, this uh, next uh, proposed project that will be uh, coming up for public hearing uh, at uh, the work session in July is in regards to annexation, zoning, as well as a uh, text amendment. The annexation and zoning is for 1.75 acres of land that is adjacent to the existing uh, city limits. Uh, the property uh, currently uh, in unincorporated Cherokee County is on GC Commercial. The applicant is requesting GC General Commercial Zoning if uh, the property is annexed. The text amendment uh, is uh, to allow, if you will, a microbrewery to uh, operate uh, in General Commercial with a maximum uh, capacity of 10,000 uh, gallons of uh, production uh, uh, per year consistent with uh, uh, the requirements in Chapter 6 of uh, the City Code. Um, uh, zoning to the north, this piece of property uh, was uh, graded a number of years ago. Uh, it is more or less uh, pad graded. Uh, there'll be a, a little bit of uh, grading work that would be uh, required. Uh, there no trees uh, on the property. Um, the zoning to the north of the property is general commercial. Uh, that is in unincorporated Cherokee County. It's part of the same uh, uh, original parcel. This 1.75 acres uh, would be uh, uh, subdivided out from uh, to the south uh, across uh, Knox Bridge Highway. Marietta Highway is a, a bank that is on General Commercial. To the east is uh, the Racetrack Convenience Store, which is on General Commercial. That uh, property uh, for uh, the racetrack was annexed and zoned by the City of Canton in 2011. The annexation of uh, that property uh, basically cut out that acreage from the original uh, track similar to what this proposal for the 1.75 uh, acres is. To the west, uh, there is a uh, small engine uh, repair uh, facility, which is also zoned uh, general commercial. Uh, like I said, you know, the text amendment is to allow the microbrewery within general commercial. You said 10,000 gallons. Did you mean barrels? Yeah. Barrels. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Patton. Move forward to item C, discussion and possible action on the salary adjustment to the city clerk for the city clerk, Mr. Peppers. The, um, the city's charter states that the mayor and council uh, set the compensation for the city clerk. Um, our current city clerk was hired in um, with the understanding that over a two-year period she would receive her clerk certifications from the state. She has done so within that two-year period, and my recommendation to the council would be a 5% pay increase, uh, and, and that is what I provided to the mayor in the memorandum. Questions, discussion? I'll make a motion to approve a 5% pay adjustment for the city clerk in recognition of achieving positions of the profession to be effective in the year. Second. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All members vote for the motion. The most excellent motion, so. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Peppers. Uh, report, just please. a few <laughs> items under my report uh, tonight. Um, First of all, we had a budget uh, um, meeting earlier today um, to let the public know that we will have public hearings on the, on the budget and millage rate. 
on July 1st at 11 a.m. in the auditorium, on July 1st at 6 p.m. in this auditorium, and on July 15th in this auditorium. That budget document is already on the city website. Uh, it's available under the finance department and also under the news section of the city website. Um, as part of our new uh, development process, I am making you aware of three cases that you will see in August for public hearings. Recall that the public hearing in August is on August 4th, which is a Wednesday. Recall we moved that meeting date because of the GMA convention in Savannah. So it will be Wednesday, August 4th. We have an application for a conditional use permit, uh, 2105-012 on Marietta Road. Uh, this is um, being proposed by TSO Canton 2, John Lloyd, Park South uh, and they are requesting townhomes in lieu of approved multifamily apartments. That site was approved for 332 apartments, and they would like to um, convert that to 156 townhomes. The second case is conditional use permit 2106-005, master plan 2106-004, and rezoning 2106003, which is the former hospital site. Uh, it is the applicant's WP Group Acquisitions. Uh, Julie Seller is the agent. Um, they are requesting a rezoning conditional use permit master plan approval for 310 uh, living units, which include 50 townhomes and 260 apartment units. The letter of intent indicates that the townhome section will be gated and the conceptual site appears to show gates for the apartment section as well. And then the last case is um, the last case is a, a zoning amendment 2106002 and conditional use permit village at River Green. Chris Olson with JW uh, Collection is the applicant. They're requesting to amend the zoning conditions and approval of a conditional use permit on the retail side to allow for 55 townhomes and 12 condominiums minimum units. The site plan also indicates 18,000 square feet of retail area along River Green Avenue. The apartments and condo units are shown to be gated. So those are the three cases that will come to you in August. Uh, I did want to note some upcoming events. Of course, the farmer's market's every Saturday from 9 to 1230 at Brown Park. On Wednesday, June 30th, we'll be visited by Atlanta United. They'll be setting up in Cannon Park to celebrate their partnership with the city and, and uh, impact soccer as it relates to our mini pitch field. So they'll be here from 4 until 8. Uh, they'll have a DJ and some giveaways and some merchandise and things like that. Uh, and that'll be downtown. Uh, then first Friday on July 2nd is the Glow Band. Uh, on July 4th, we are having our parade and fireworks on the 4th of July. Um, <laughs> I know that some other cities are battling with that right now, but ours are actually on the 4th. Um, and I would like to note that the parade by the American Legion uh, will start at 3 p.m. and it is moving back to downtown. So the parade will be in downtown at 3 p.m. that Sunday afternoon, and the fireworks will be at dark that night at Riverstone. Um, I wanted to let you know that um, earlier this week, I believe it was on Tuesday, the last city signed off on service delivery strategy. Those documents were transmitted today to the Department of Community Affairs. And I reached out to the planning director at the Department of Community Affairs and told him, as he's a Cherokee County resident, he needed to make sure those were expedited. <laughs> We're the only county in the state that currently does not have an active service delivery strategy, so there's no reason they should need to take 30 days. Um, and then uh, lastly, I wanted to note that uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've been able to have our first meetings with the new uh, Canton Tourism Board and the new Cultural Arts Commission. Those went very well. We've got some great people on those groups, and... Um, and we're working to get additional meetings scheduled for them in the next two weeks so they can get started on these things. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have for me. Mr. Carlin. Can you tell the start time for the Atlanta United? Four o'clock. Four to eight? Four to eight. Thank you very much. 
uh, please pass along our thanks to the American Legion for moving the parade back downtown. That's uh, where it should be on the 4th of July, so. <laughs> sure will. Um, any other questions, comments? Thank you, Mr. Peppers. We have one council introduced item, uh, Councilor McGrew, uh, discuss convenience stores. Thank you. First, may I ask Mr. Peppers a question before I yes, start talking? Mr. Peppers, uh, if something has been discussed in the DRT meeting, it's not confidential anymore, is it? Because those are public meetings? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Then I don't have to scratch a name out of my... <laughs> I wanted to talk about the number of convenience stores that are submitting plans to come to our city. And I realize that they're allowed in general commercial properties, and they don't have to come to council for approval at all. They just pull their permits and, and build out their structure. But I have concerns about the high numbers of stores that are coming and their locations. On Riverstone Boulevard alone, there are numerous from Walgreens to Walmart. I mean, you can just count them. Uh, new stores are coming um, in that old Shell station across from Williamson Brothers Barbecue. That's going to be a convenience store. Uh, the old Shoney's, which was our beloved Thai restaurant, it's going to be a convenience store probably. I mean, there, that's being talked about in the DRT. Chevron on the corner, diagonal from CVS, across from Walgreens, that's getting permits to build out as a convenience store and in, enlarge itself. Also, um, there is a group that wants to develop the corner of Reinhardt College Parkway and Reservoir Drive. So that means that's the corner down from Teasley uh, Middle School. Uh, they want to put in a, a strip plaza with a convenience store with gas stations. I've got a great deal of concern about the close proximity of convenience store gas station to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And I want us to think about how we want our city to look, how this fits in with our plan. Do we want a gas station on every block? We don't need a gas station on every block. So I would like to ask council to talk about doing an ordinance, uh, specifying distances, uh, maybe a CUP that they have to come to council for um, approval. And I would strongly encourage council to disallow the advertisement posters in the windows for safety purposes. We all know what's inside of a convenience store. There's cigarettes, there's beer, there's gum. You know, there's Band-Aids and aspirin. We know what's in the convenience store, so we don't need the advertisements in the windows to tell us that they've got Marlboros. Um, it's a safety hazard, whereas a customer going up to the door to pay for their gasoline or to go in and, and buy the product that they need, uh, they would not be able to see inside to, there could be, um, shenanigans going on inside. It's a public safety officer hazard that if there's a call for an emergency there, they can't see inside before they enter, and they don't know if the, it's an armed robbery or just what's going on. So I would like to ask council to disallow the uh, large advertisements in the windows. And let me point you to an example of that is the Texaco station on the corner where Walgreens, CVS, the Chevron and the Y is, those windows are covered up. So I learned recently that Mr. Patton has uh, gotten acquainted with the Clarkston ordinance. They have an ordinance for convenience stores. I would like for us to consider such an ordinance and ask Mr. Patton if he would send us that ordinance or Mr. Peppers to send us that ordinance. And let's talk about what we want to do about this. Does anybody else have these concerns? Comments, questions? Yeah, there are certainly some safety concerns when you drive up to any establishment where there could be <clears throat> activities going on inside that, you know, if you don't have any visibility to that, you don't know how to react. And conversely, you know, looking out, um, I, I, I agree. And Ms. McGrew and I have talked about this several times, and so I, I would certainly support that ordinance. Didn't we, in terms of the signs, I 
Well, we already had that, and then we just kept ignoring it. <laughs> I mean, really, yes. you've brought it up over the last four years. Ad nauseum. Here, exactly. Ad nauseum, right? I thought we had an I believe the ads, ads in the window are part of the sign ordinance, yeah. correct? So that would be Addressable. discussed as it. We discussed that certainly, but under the sign ordinance. But if we completely disallow the signs, because let's face it, they're ugly. Yeah, and we can discuss that. So. We don't need ugly. <laughs> We can certainly discuss it. I'm not sure it's legal, but we can discuss it. We know it's inside the store. So you forgot lottery tickets too. So I'm sorry. You forgot lottery tickets. So. Well, yes, lottery tickets and roller food. Oh my God, roller food. We know it's in there, but um, and I've asked for you know the signs issue ad nauseum to be addressed, and the convenience store owners are ignoring us. So I want us to talk about distance requirements, um, the way they look. And I haven't seen the ordinance from Clarkston. So can we get this on the agenda for our work session in July after we see the ordinance? Yeah, we can ask uh, Mr. Patton to forward that ordinance to us and we can put it on the work session for July for discussion. If there's support on council to go down that road, I mean, if there's no support on council. I'm curious to see it. I think I tend to be, you know, look at market demand form on it and, you know, people are putting them up and I'm like, mm, it's up to market demand, you know, eventually. I don't know, I hate to limit too much. Um, I'd be curious to see what the ordinance says. And Well, your job before our next meeting is to go down Riverstone Parkway, <laughs> uh, Knoxbridge Highway and count them. That's your job. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to talk about what, if we're going to go back and forth between talking about what our constituents are coming up to us and asking for and not asking for, they don't want their streets littered with convenience stores. So whether or not they stay in business once they're open is yeah. different than what the constituents want and can. I know. I think the balance that I'm trying to get around is just, I don't know, what, what, what are the tactics for I just don't want another ordinance where we can't enforce it. That's my So the, the no uh, speech limitations as regards to to amendment to Article Two. Yeah, um, the signage. <laughs> no, first time. We, we I mean we already have ordinances about uh, province is based on percentages, mm -hmm. and then when signage you get into inside and outside, and they're right. very clever about it and but it requires some uh stick to it -iveness. but mr patton is going to send us a copy of a an approved ordinance it's it's a there's two different no, 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 issues it's from clarkston and i, I did want to the reason i stood up is by all means look at it please don't use that as a model it was done <laughs> it was done in 1986 it's got a lot of technical stuff that we probably are not going to that was state of the art then um, but it does have distance requirements, so it'll show you what that looks like. It has some things about driveway locations, which I think are appropriate and good. But it's got a lot of stuff about uh, the type of pumps and all that. It's probably outdated. Mm -hmm. And it's very extensive. And they were essentially banning convenience stores, I think, because they also prohibited uh, sale of alcohol. And Mr. Patton discovered that in their alcohol ordinance so, <laughs> as of 2016. So. Um, by all means, look at that as an example of what you can do. But it's a lot of stuff in there that I don't think we're going to want to do. So have you reviewed that ordinance, Mr. Dyer? Briefly. Briefly. I, I, it was just a lot of very uh, technical things about the operation of a fuel station, okay. which I'm sure has changed technology-wise in 30 It would be years. appropriate to uh, <clears throat> ask you or Mr. Batten when you do send it to say these are the things we should look at and consider or – in that or uh, just just take a look at it i just be cautious that we're probably not going to suggest that we just copy that correct okay so. mr mayor can i just throw something out uh, to mr estes comments um you know that's probably a good initiative for the blight and code, code compliance committee to address um i mean certainly that that falls i would think within the purview of that committee and and Mr. Dyer talked about stick to stick to itiveness. I think we have a stick to itiveness sort of attitude on that. I think we can get some things done. So just a we're meeting next Friday at one o'clock, by the way. 
<laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll add that Get to the agenda. Schedule. So the, the one issue when you decide you're going to put it on the agenda in two weeks, that leaves two weeks for things to happen. <laughs> so um, in, the, in that two week next time, we need to think about uh, adopting a moratorium uh, to give us time to draft an ordinance and go through a process because if, if we're going to amend the zoning ordinance, we're going to have to do a public hearing process. So we would need to put a moratorium on any new convenience stores, fuel service stations. Does that, does a moratorium doesn't require a public hearing though, right? Has no, it no, because no. it, it, it's temporary. We, I mean, you know, we probably talk about 120 days because we have, our zoning ordinance process takes 90 days and you're going to want, uh, you got to have some time to, we don't know what you want. So we're going to have to go through some discussion with you about what to put in this ordinance. Um, and so we, we would need to think about a moratorium. Would you want a wish list from each council member and what, what well, they would Well, you like gave to us one, and that those are, we, the distance requirements, I think, is what we're really talking about. That's the only way you're going to control the number of them. Mm -hmm. And then, and so what you do then is as, as things close, if they're, the, they may not be able to be replaced because of the distance requirement. Um, and I think a thousand feet is probably what uh, makes sense, but but it may be long, maybe further, you know. Can you address the uh, First Amendment rights of advertisements in the window? Yeah, there's, I don't, I'm not worried about that. I, I, there are plenty of good reasons to, to Safety. prohibit it. Safety and, and appearance, both of those things. I mean, it, um, nobody has a right to put it on window. So. But those are two different ordinances, correct? But they're not. Signage. Yes, signage and the signage would be somewhere else. Correct. Now, it, what's interesting is, of course, if you have no signage, then people complain about seeing the beer signs and neon in the back. So, you, you know, you got these balances. If it's too clear, you don't like what's in there. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just want to be clear. You have to be that careful about that. If so. we do add, when we add the issues to the work session, it needs to be added two issues, not one. So they're two separate issues. So. Yeah. Well, I think let us take a look at what we already have and we can put that out and say, here's what our rules already say. And we if they don't actually that. ban that, we need to look at how to. We already have some, something about neon signs already in downtown. I yeah, we adopted something the about the flashing signs. Uh, the and there's a couple that we consider to be grandfathered in that, but I don't, we could actually, that's not something that you need to consider grandfathered. So there, we can just take a look at all that again. Yeah. Right now, the signage is 30% maximum, so that's just an enforcement issue if they're completely covered up. If I might, uh, the text code that you specifically mentioned, code enforcement did go out. Uh, the uh, one side that you uh, see sitting uh, uh, at the traffic light next to the Chevron looking at uh, the text code. That side pretty well is covered with signage. The uh, other two sides are not completely covered with signage. Uh, code enforcement looked at all of uh, the wind areas on the, the three sides of that building, and it did meet the 30% uh, percent, uh, that's within our uh, code requirement. Uh, you can certainly uh, change that make it such that it's 30 percent uh, per uh, window panel or uh, other mechanisms uh, re related uh, to that but uh, the clarkston ordinance is for gasoline service stations uh, convenience stores fall underneath gasoline uh, service stations in the clarkston ordinance it is 15 pages it is very detailed in regards to uh, site design and setback limits uh, as it relates to underground storage tanks, uh, driveway locations, uh, vent pipes for the underground storage, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, that's the first one that I found that I uh, sent to Mr. Peppers and Mr. Dyer uh, in regards to this issue. Uh, our office has uh, received quite a few uh, phone calls in regards to uh, convenience stores 
uh, Clarkston, I think, is uh, for the most part, uh, they fall underneath gasoline station. They do have uh, distance separation requirements in their ordinance. Uh, I'm aware that there are other local governments in the metro Atlanta area that have amended their codes within the last year uh, as it relates to uh, convenience stores with uh, fuel pumps uh, to uh, include the distance separation requirements. Well, with the applications or phone calls that you're getting from interested parties that want to make convenience stores here, do you think we should enact a moratorium tonight? That's what I was. That's what I was. I was actually about was to suggest that, that. So, <laughs> since we've discussed it so and, extensively tonight, so and that would if I was going to open one, I would apply tomorrow. But <laughs> exactly. I was about to ask Mr. That's Dyer for people being able to come in and apply for a permit. If it, the concern well, is that uh, that Dyer, uh, that's what I was going to suggest because we have mentioned it tonight. But. Right, and I do realize that this moratorium would not affect any that are already in our DRT phase. And it, well, any moratorium would not apply to anybody who's already applied. Correct. Or that we have, if there is a situation where we've told them it's allowed and they've actually spent money. Right. I mean, just inquiry is not enough. Sure. Because they could have obtained vested rights. But um, So it would only apply to uh, things that have not already sought a, a permit. And so would that be worded as convenience stores or gap? Well, so so that's a, our ordinance, uh, I believe, defines it as convenience stores with or without fuel, fuel pumps. We're going to have to change the definitions to have gasoline service stations and allow convenience stores that don't have gas fuel pumps. I'm, you're not worried about a store that's just selling groceries. That's a Publix. It may be a small Publix. So you got to think through all of that. But what we would want to, the moratorium should say no permits for a gasoline sale, uh, any business that would be fuel pumps. Do we have a duration? Yeah. Uh, they said 120 days-ish. Okay. 120. We run into transparency yeah, issues, though, so they could have just brought it tonight. I know it's dire. Mr. Dyer? Well, you can move to, you can move to amend the agenda to add it, but that's it's otherwise it's a policy matter um, about whether it's fair or not. That's what I think Mr. Estes was saying. But but you you do need to move to amend it, the agenda to add it, so at least it's officially on the agenda. But that can be done tonight. But so otherwise, it's policy. Is it not on the agenda since I asked to put convenience stores on the con um, Council introduced items. That's that's probably enough. I forgot I forgot that you had specifically said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Carter hasn't said anything. No, I heard you ask. <laughs> I'll give you my two cents for what it's worth. Sure. Half the things you're talking about were previously <laughs> convenience stores, so. That doesn't give me as much heartburn. I think from a consumer perspective, gas stations nearby one another increases competition. And I think that's typically a good thing for residents. And we currently have an a ordinance that we need to ensure is being enforced, although now it sounds like they have tried to enforce it and maybe they followed the letter of the law but not the spirit of the law which means we will change the letter of the law to reflect the spirit more accurately. If you want to take some time to sort it out, I'll certainly hear everybody out. I think if something you're, something you're worried about will take 120 days, study it, figure it out, and go from there. And it also lets everybody know kind of where we are, where we stand with it. So that'd be my two cents. I, I kind of fall somewhere between the gentleman on the end. <laughs> uh, I understand the concern. I mean, I, I, we, we all drive around cities and roads 
that you know it's convenience store CD. I mean, I mean, we we know the impact of that or just appearance. So I'm not. I could see uh, a distance requirement. I can't see much more beyond that because then I say, well, what are we not going to like next? We're not going to like this kind of business, so let's start, you know, let's have an ordinance for that. So let's, um, the signage, I, I totally agree with, but I think that's that's the signage, you know, we, we need to address that, and I think we've discussed that, you know, several years now. So that does need to be addressed. So, uh, but I think if we wanted to, to, uh, to, to look at the ordinance, Again, if the one we're looking at was 1986 Clarkston, Georgia, again, I don't know how appropriate it is, but I think if the real issue is the distance, you know, it seems like that could be something that we could do quickly. Um, or if it's, I mean, I also believe on, on Riverstone, we do have an overlay district. Maybe it could be something, you know, limited to overlay districts if that's, you know, if that's the real concern. Uh, uh, so I think there are a couple things to, to look at there. Um, again, I, I I agree with Mr. Estes as far as you know more regulations and and things about you know not in, enforcing. But I think on on that I understand the concern. Um, but you know, the other side of me says, well, how far do we go on the other businesses? And you know, are there two grocery stores, you know, too close together, you know, or, or things like that. So it, uh, just things that I think are worth discussing. And, and if we have council members that are concerned about it, we should discuss it. So, uh, and I, I was going to bring up if, if the concern was that great, since we did go ahead and discuss it in such detail tonight, you know, that you may want to interact and enact a moratorium tonight. But I think to Mr. Estes' point, if to be fair, we, we you did add it to the agenda, but the public, you know, didn't have, um, you know, two weeks. Someone could do that. I don't think someone's going to say, "Oh no, they're going to, you know, keep me." I'm going to decide to open a convenience store in two weeks. But it's it's up to council. It's council's decision. I, I'm not that concerned about it. But if the concern is that great, but you know, I think, you know. All good discussions to have. So, I mean, I'll, if it's going to be, I mean, the concern is, if the concern is, is about transparency and should we do a moratorium today or wait a few weeks, I would say go ahead and do it today, just because we do know there are some things in the works right now from the DRT meeting that are probably close to pulling the trigger. I would anticipate could be close to pulling the trigger on something. We don't want to get caught in the middle of having to change rules while we're going. Um, so this would, this is what we want to spend our time looking at, look at it, take 120 days, either do something or don't do something, and move on to the next issue. That'll be my two cents on that. Would 90 days be enough time to? It would, because it could always be extended. I mean, if you, if if we did 90 days, you decided you wanted to do something, and then we needed additional time just to run through the zoning process, we would extend the moratorium for the zoning process. We also, if we, if council did elect to, to do a moratorium tonight, we discuss at the next meeting or the next two meetings, we decide we're not going to move forward. We can uh, lift the moratorium. Well, so right. so what, why don't we do this? Um, why don't we just do a 30-day moratorium, discuss it in July. If you decide to do an ordinance, the second meeting in July, we can enact another moratorium for the purpose of enacting the ordinance. I, or, or I like that suggestion. So, yeah. and it so, so it's, so it's temp very short, right. and it just lets you talk about it and decide what you want to do, and then we can do another one. I like it, that. It, so that through the end of July, a moratorium through the end of July. I like that. So I make a motion that we have a moratorium on convenience stores that sell fuel for 30 days through the so, end of so July. So we, sh we should say any fuel, fuel pumps because pump. it doesn't necessarily have to be a convenience store. You have Ingalls, for instance. Mm -hmm. Any fuel store pumps. with fuel pumps. Okay. Is there another motion? Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Yeah. Further yeah. discussion? Just for clarity, uh, I, th I think let's clarify. We're, we're going to do it through end of July. Yeah, end of July, not 30 days, correct? Yes, end okay. of July. I said that probably didn't okay. say it clearly enough. All right. 
Still seconded. Okay. <laughs> so motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All members voted with the exception of Mr. Estes. Thank you. Uh, my report, um, just one official item, um, sustainability committee. Uh, we had a great report tonight. Um, we had, I want to thank uh, Kelly for putting together a great overview of, of uh, I know Ms. McGrew and I met with uh, staff and um, discussed how, you know, the, the purpose for this committee and, and trying to get organized and, and Kelly put together a great uh, overview for us to consider. Uh, but we, we do want to, to get this in motion. But I wanted to officially uh, appoint uh, Councilor McGrew as, as liaison to that sustainability committee. So to make that official. I think we all assumed it, but make it official. So <laughs> anoint her with those, those talents. So, and I know we have other committees, new committees. And uh, we'll, if we need to appoint official things, we'll do that too. But I need to think about that. But <laughs> I was requested to do that, so I won't do it tonight. So, but I did want to mention, we, we, we did, um, as Mr. Peppers mentioned, mentioned tourism and arts count commission. And I just want to say, and I've discussed it with several council members, how excited I am to have so many new citizens engaged uh, in our city. It's, it's very exciting. New citizens for the first time, new citizens from across the city, uh, to see how excited they are to, to participate um, and how many people actually um, completed our uh, participation applications. And I just, um, it thrills me to see new energy in the city and, and see our citizens involved in, in, in helping us move our roadmap forward. So I want to thank you all for encouraging your constituents to, to do that. So, And at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss litigation and real estate. Motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss litigation and real estate. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All members voted to adjourn. <laughs> I didn't put it right in front of me. I'll write this down. Did you break it? <laughs> I didn't make it.